Today's candidate is probably the most requested that I've had in a long time. Winchester Train and Defend. Now, I've tested a number of Winchester rounds and haven't really found a truly outstanding round until the last one I tested, which was the Winchester Ranger T-Series. That was outstanding. But the comments are, are, are just coming in and people are like, where can we buy this? You can't buy this anywhere. So I found that not only can you buy Train and Defend, it didn't even cost very much. I got this at Academy for, I don't remember, it was like 14 bucks a box or something. It was on sale. Very affordable. And it's a neat idea. Yes, we know the basic concept that we have a full metal jacket, the train line, and we have a hollow point, the defend line, and that they're equal weight and they're supposed to be loaded to equal velocity. That's great. That's fine and dandy. We've always known that you're supposed to train with a round that's of equivalent weight to what your your defense rounds are so that you your point of aim should stay roughly the same. But has anybody made exactly the same round exactly the same way? What I like about it is if you look at the shape of the FMJ, it is the same as the hollow point, which really says if the FMJ feeds in your gun, the hollow point is going to feed in your gun. That's a nice thing to know. Second of all, the, the aerodynamics of it should be the same. So if you train with good accuracy with the FMJ, it should follow over to the hollow point. Third, the, the velocity rating should be identical. So, you know, the amount of recoil should be exactly the same. Um, in testing that, I loaded up a magazine or two with uh, mostly the trains, but I mixed in a few defense here and there. Didn't know which rounds they were going to be. Did the whole, you know, blind shuffle. I'm not looking. I'm just loading the mag blind. And uh, absolutely could not tell the difference between the train and the defend rounds as far as recoil, as far as accuracy. That was a good idea. So all of that is promising. Another thing they've done, which I think is fantastic, is... Winchester, they've got the PDX-1. They have the Ranger. They have the Ranger bonded. They have uh, all sorts of ammo. What are you supposed to use? How are you supposed to know what you're supposed to use? They got them in 147 grain. They got them in, you know, 124 grain and plus P and not plus P and all these confusing choices. Not with the train and defend. They're going to have one box that says train one train, one box that says defend. That's all there is. You don't have to worry about whether it's mismatched or it's plus P or not plus P or if you're using a different weight or, or if it's different technology, you know, it's a Ranger or a Ranger T or whatever. None of that matters. It's all just down to, hey, uh, when you go to the store, can you pick up some of that Winchester Defend in nine millimeter? That's all you need to know because there's only going to be one product on the shelf. I think that's a great idea. I think that eliminates customer confusion. But the question is, does it perform well? Because none of that means nothing if it's not a good performing bullet. And I'm a little concerned because this is 147 grain. And, you know, the modern handgun that everybody's using, three inch barrel, this is the common popular handgun. Not this particular one, the SIG P938, but a Smith & Wesson Shield or, or a Car PM9 or, or any of a number of guns. The short barrel is the thing. And 147 grain bullets have not performed well from the short barrels. It's been very difficult to find any decent performers. The only ones that I've found that actually are good are two from Federal, the 147 and the 147 Plus P, the HSTs, and also the Winchester Ranger T in 147. And none of those are sold to the public. Those are all law enforcement only ammo. All the sold to the public 147 like I can find over penetrate they don't expand well they're too heavy and they don't get up to speed out of the short barrel so that's a problem so Winchester has a chance here maybe they have optimized this for the short barrel maybe they've made a 147 that you can easily buy because it's sold everywhere maybe you can now have a heavy bullet that works properly from a three inch gun and gives you great terminal performance or maybe it doesn't, and maybe it's really, you know, only going to work from a 4.6 inch gun, like, you know, a Glock 17 or something. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> Look at this. This is 
Fantastic. Look at the consistency. Look at them all bunched up. We got three bullets at 15 and three quarters inches. Uh, even the shorter bullets, the shortest one was 14 and three quarters, and then we had one at 15. And then 15 three quarters, 15 three quarters, 15 three quarters. In other words, perfect, 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 perfect. This is about as good as I've ever seen of any type of bullet, but especially from a 147 grain from the pocket pistol. Now we got to go try the denim because... You know, when 147s fail, they usually fail in the denim. So let's see how they did there. But so far, optimistic. This is how you send a 147 grain bullet into a gel block and you do it with standard pressure. This is fantastic. Shortest bullet, 15 and a quarter. Longest bullet, 17. So we had one at 15 and a quarter, two at 15 and three quarters, and one at 16 inches. The longest one at 17 inches. Uh, you can't really see them all from this one angle, so I'm gonna rotate this block over, but uh, okay, penetration wise, genius. These are the best performing bullets I have seen from any 147. So now we have to actually examine the bullets and see if they hold up their end, because if they all properly expanded, then I think we have a tremendous performer here. They're really, really good. Really consistent. Uh, nine of the ten of them look basically identical to each other. They don't have the talent. I was wondering if they were going to have the spiky talents that the Ranger T has. They don't. So these are more like the PDX-1 bullets. And probably are the PDX-1 bullets. But reformulated to work properly at these velocities. We do have one bullet that's looking a little sketchy. Like it was thinking about maybe doing a little jacket core separation, but it didn't. So, every one of them, we've got nice big bullets that penetrated deeply, real deeply, and very consistently. It's just about perfect. It's really a great performance. They didn't peel back very far. Sometimes you see bullets peeling way back. They didn't. And I bet you if we fired these from a, a longer barrel gun... I bet you they would just peel back further, penetrate a little bit less, but still be within that 12 to 18 inch window. It's possible that Winchester has made a perfect round here that will perform properly from all barrel lengths and still reach optimal penetration depths. I, we'll have to test that to find out. But as it is, no complaints whatsoever. They're all excellent. The only thing I want to do to put it in context is this is an HST 147 plus P. Uh, in my testing, this did a great job. I was very pleased with it, but it did not penetrate quite as much. It expands bigger. You can see that it is slightly bigger. And they're not plus P. This was a plus P HST in order to get that performance. So uh, I gotta say, this is looking like the best 147 grain bullet I have tested from that three inch barrel. Wrap up on the Winchester 147 grain defense. Okay. Admittedly, the trophy has adorned a few different boxes, but right now for a 147, I think this is this is the best performing 147 I've seen. Uh, and I especially like that it's standard pressure, so you don't have to go to plus P and wear your gun out sooner. Uh, or if you have like a Diamondback DB9 that can't even handle plus P, I like that it's a 147. I'm really happy that they got a good performing 147. This is my favorite performing 147 I've tried so far. I'm going to keep it open and I'll keep looking, but as of right now, I guess the only way to really sum it up is uh, I'm putting away my HSTs, which I love and which have been loaded in my P938 ever since I first tested them. And I'm replacing them which, with Winchester Defend 147s. So that's how I feel about it. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified next time a video is posted.